Good morning, YouTube. Greetings from Chiang Mai, Thailand. In today's video, I'm gonna take you on a little hike I'm gonna do. It's kind of noisy here, I'm at an intersection, but I love this little area right here. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna take you on my morning walk. I mentioned in one of my live streams that I do a morning walk every single morning where I do 10,000 to up to 40,000 steps. And people were like, hey, can you take us along with you? on these types of things and show us around, show us Thailand, show us the different things you're seeing. And I'm like, I don't know, it might be boring. So this is gonna be an experiment for me. I've been thinking about doing more videos like this and kind of making it an every other day, every three day type of thing where I take you out on whatever little daily adventure I'm on. It's unscripted. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna walk around Chiang Mai here. This is, um, this is the old city of Chiang Mai. You've got the walls here. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. You got the moat here and it's just really cool. It's a cool walk. And there's a lot of things that go on in the morning here. There's a morning market, which we'll stop by. I'll probably grab some fruit and then maybe we'll walk. Uh, we're going to walk the perimeter of the city, but then we'll probably walk a little bit inside the city. And, you know, I'll show you some things inside the city and we'll just check out things as we go you know it's not scripted I have no idea what's gonna happen maybe something cool will happen that's why we do these unscripted videos right but yeah that's what we're gonna do this morning we're gonna walk around Chiang Mai for those that don't know Chiang Mai has been around since the 13th century around 1296 is how old this city is the walls around the city in this moat came in around the 17th century, I believe. Might be the 15th century, but I think it's 17th century. I think it was in the 1600s. And um, it was for protection, obviously. These walls are all around. They look newer to me, someone from the Midwest. These are like orange colored bricks, kind of like that are in the houses from the 1800s in St. Louis where I grew up. But they are, I mean, they're, they're much, much older than that. And then there's a molt, moat built around here that's still here. The city of Chiang Mai, the entire city, not the old town, but the entire city, has around 120,000 people in it, somewhere around there. So it's a relatively big city, but it's kind of spread out and it feels more like a small town. In the little neighborhood I'm in, which is next to the old city called Neiman, I run into people all the time that I've known for years or people that I was fans of their YouTube channel or their blog. It's very small townish. You run into people all the time, especially if you live in Neiman or Old Town, you're gonna run into people because there's just a huge amount of expats in there. So there are a ton of temples here in Chiang Mai. There are 117 temples. So early on into my walk already, we run into a temple and we're not even inside the old city walls where the oldest temples are but this one's pretty old here. I think this one's 14th or 15th century. So, I mean, it's just beautiful wood. A lot of these are more modern, but I prefer these older ones. And I'll show you an old, I believe it's called a Bakoda. I wanna be really quiet here because I don't know if anybody is worshiping right now, praying. Let's see. Always take your shoes off when you come into a, uh, to a temple but shoes are off and uh, you can see how beautiful this is just I mean just ornate and old and it's not as flashy <clears throat> it's not as flashy as some of the other ones but I like that I like the older school look to these places it's just I mean it's beautiful so let's go let me show you the old ancient pagoda you'll see a lot of newer pagodas that are really like shiny and gold but I really like these old ones. And I, I think this is like 13th, 14th century type of stuff. So you'll see here, it's just, I mean, you talk about Instagram. It reminds you of something that you would see in Cambodia. Obviously they share a lot of similarities, Thailand and Cambodia, but it just reminds me of like something you would see at Angkor Wat or something. You can see how old this thing is, I don't know if you can see up there, there's like plants growing off of it, but it's just gorgeous here. It's like a gorgeous little area. It's pretty amazing. When you're here, you kind of take for granted, like 
how much cool stuff there is in Chiang Mai. I've said it before, like, you you eventually get numb to temples because there's so many. Like I mentioned, there's, there's 117 just here alone by itself, and there's more and more uh, in other places. So it's really fascinating. But let's get back on the walk and uh, show you some of the old town. We're still out on the outskirts, outer walls. I love little things like this. Look at this little guy. <laughs> Those are my favorite kinds of Buddhas. So when you're on this little outer road here, it's really, really busy. There's all these bridges to cross over the, uh, the moat here and get to the other side. But now we're on the other side, although I said it wasn't as busy, but eh, you know, it looks, Looks pretty busy. See this red bus right here? It's going by. That thing right there, you see there's someone in the back of it. That's called a bot bus. So you can jump on that and for about 30 US cents, about 10 bot, it'll take you most places. You can also rent those out and they'll take you to like the sticky waterfall, which is kind of a famous thing to do here in Chiang Mai. They'll take you up to Doi Su Tep. That's that mountain over there. There's a bunch of temples up there. It's beautiful. It's an amazing hike. I highly recommend it. But you can pay them and it's it's not that expensive for what you get. They'll basically haul you and your buddies around for like 20 bucks a piece all day at all these really cool places. And if you do it alone, I'm sure it'd, it'd probably be about 30, 60 dollars, somewhere around there. But if you have a couple buddies with you, you just jump in the back of that truck and those little red vehicles will take you around anywhere. It's pretty cool. So I'm on the outer part of the road but so we're, we're inside the walls now where the walls used to be you'll still see some old walls but we're inside the walls and that would go into the heart of the city and we'll go in there in a little bit but we're gonna stay on the outskirts right now because uh, it's just better for you know a long walk uh, not as peaceful because of all the traffic but once I get around the curve up here it gets a little bit better so that's what we're gonna do <laughs> So you can see here, this is remnants of the old wall where a gate used to be. And those are preserved pretty well because they, they were built like really thick and on these like hills. And so they're, they're actually preserved pretty well. Um, a lot of the, you know, what would have been the thinner part of the walls are what's missing now. And there's these old like, um, they almost look like um, gravestones or something, but they have some kind of writing on them. And there's always like Buddhist, type of uh, offerings here. So I'm assuming it's something, although someone spray painted it, what a jerk. But you can see there's like ancient carvings in them, which is really cool. So here's another one of those like, kind of look like gravestone type of things with ancient writing on it. This one's not graffitied, which is nice. But you can see here, I don't know if you can see, I'm not gonna touch it, but there's like ancient writing on it that's fading, you know? I mean, at some point, probably, I don't know, 30, 40 years, it probably won't even be there anymore. It'll be more smooth like this. I'm sure there used to be writing there as well. But you can see, pretty cool. So much history here. Like I mentioned, you kind of take it for granted um, when you're here. Because you're, you're walking around and there's 117 temples, most of them built in the 13th, 14th, and 15th century. Like, we don't have anything in the, in the US like built in the 13th, 14th, 15th century that's still there. Like, we think really cool stuff is like from the, you know, 18th and 19th century that we, that we still have. But stuff over here is just like so ancient. It's just, it's amazing. And you, but you take it for granted when you're here because there's so much of it. Just like everywhere in Chiang Mai, the old city has like really cool little coffee shops. You saw that one, it's like all red. I think that's also a bar as well. But in the day, in the morning, it's a coffee shop. Now, if I didn't mention it before, it's like uh, 9.40 in the morning. When I started this video, it was around by 9.20. And uh, so it's not as early as I normally get out here because I was kind of struggling getting my camera ready to go do this. Because I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it, people are asking for it. I'm gonna go ahead and make a video like that. And if you're liking this, 
smash that thumbs up button and say, hey dude, I like this style of video, man. Keep, keep, uh, keep churning them out. So the Chiang Mai night market is pretty famous, but honestly, I prefer the, the day market. <laughs> and I'll show you why. So there's a lot of outside stuff here, mostly food. And then there's an inside part, which I'll show you in a second, but you can see a lot of, a lot of commerce going on here. I get these apples all the time. They're only 20 baht a piece, so like, I don't know, 35 cents a piece, 40 cents a piece. Yeah, maybe, maybe 50 cents a piece, but still cheap. <laughs> and they're really like juicy. They're really good. Over here is, they sell like clothes and stuff. And uh, that's pretty cool. But then, then you go into the inside part, which has a lot of food, but it also has other things that you can buy um, at a normal market, like almost anything you can think of, <laughs> you can find here, electronics, um, Look at how yummy that food looks. Oh, look, you can buy like pots and pans. Candles. It just goes way, 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 way back in here. All kinds of like food stalls in the back. Then you have like your knickknacks. You know, purses. This is where I bought my little fanny pack, actually. Yeah. Even got some clothes here. Clothes in Thailand never fit me. I'm a big fat American. So. <laughs> so you can find all kinds of cool stuff in this little market here. Like, I mean, anything you can think of, like inside this market, we have tape and scissors, you know? Anything you can think of. Clothes. Yeah, every knickknack you can possibly think of. Smells really good in here, like tons of like, tons of like different dishes you can get down there, like food wise, dish, by dishes I mean like dishes of food, not dishes. We're gonna go through here though, this is a little bit easier. So you can buy your Coke here, <laughs> everything. And then down this way, we're gonna go back to the, we're gonna go back to going around, but um, down this way, there's like a ton of restaurants, like little small mom and pops. That's what I love about um, Chiang Mai and Thailand in general, is there's just mom and pops everywhere. Even this like little coffee stand here, behind me. <clears throat> yeah, pretty cool. So we're back, we're back on the little outer road here. So you can see there's the there's the ancient wall right there. Some of it, remnants of it. So look at this place. Look at how cool this is. This is what I love. I was talking about mom and pop. Like, look at this. Like you got a hamburger, you've got a club sandwich, but then you've got like fish, you've got Thai food. There's some prawn. You've got mango sticky rice, which is famous. You got pizza, although it looks a little weird. <laughs> but you got all kinds of things. Look, here's the price. So you can get pancakes. That's very Western for one thirty. That's uh, about three, four dollars. French toast, which is my favorite. So you can get Western food here. It's usually a little bit more expensive, but looks pretty good. Maybe we'll stop and get something in a little bit. Um, 
I've been filming and kind of like showing you stuff. Oh, look at this. Look at this chicken. This looks so good. That's the kind of stuff I like. I know people warn you against street food a lot of the times, but you know what? You got to toughen up your stomach. I've been traveling for decades. And so for me, like, I do get sick sometimes, but I got a pretty iron stomach from just eating across the world uh, my whole life, you know, most of my adult life. And it sucks when you get it, but you got to get it to not, to develop a stomach that doesn't get sick from doing that kind of stuff. So it's just one of those things that you got to do. So then you can get massage. For really, she's always so nice. I, I walk by here every morning. She always says hi. You can get a massage for an hour for 250 baht. So three, six, about, about $8. Thank you, seven, $8. She's so nice. Like I see her every morning walking through here. She's like the nicest lady. And I've never even gotten a massage there. But she's always like super nice. Says, hello, how's your walk? How you doing? Um, she used to ask me like, you want a massage? But now she knows I'm on my morning walk so she doesn't ask me. But one of these days I need to go there because she's just so nice. Such a nice person. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, so you can, you, can, you can eat out for a couple bucks, get a massage for, under 10 bucks and, and like stay in a nice place like this for 15 bucks a night. So for 25 bucks a night, you can stay in a nice place, have a decent meal, get a massage. <laughs> Tell me other places in the world that for 25 bucks you could do that. <laughs> so this little area right here is what most people would consider like the main gate area. And there's actually a, a huge Starbucks on the other side of this wall, which I'll show you in a second. It's also where a lot of the celebrations are done, and it's got the mo it's got most of the of the old wall. It's not all broken down like some of the other spots. It's pretty cool, actually. It's just amazing how old it is. I mean, it's amazing. You know, 15th, 16th century. Yeah, you'll see here. There's a ton of... Oh, shoot! <laughs> There's a ton of, uh, of potential in this little area. Like on New Year's, this, was, this area was packed. You've got, the, you've got the moat on either side where the moat ends. And then you have what most people would consider the main gate. And over here, you've got like a Starbucks. The coolest Starbucks here is in Niman, if you're into Starbuckses. There's a really nice one in Niman. But this one's pretty cool too, it's like three floor. And it's right here. And this is the third Starbucks I've seen since I've been walking. I didn't show you all of them, but it's the third one. So if you like Starbucks, you can get it here. Pay three to five dollars for a Starbucks or you can get something just as good, if not better, for less, so. <laughs> every, every now and then you'll see a Western monk, like a white guy monk. Uh, not very often, but sometimes you'll see one, so there was one right there. I don't recommend doing all the Western stuff, like eating at Burger King and things like that. But if you want it, sometimes you have the option of doing it. So we're gonna head down this way. We're gonna head into the city a little bit. And um, this is where I'll be, I'll, I'll be living in this area. I'll actually show you exactly where I'll be living next month. Look at this place. I mentioned the mango sticky rice. So mango sticky rice is really famous in Thailand. Um, it's just really good. It's like mango and then you have like uh, really, really, really sticky rice and it'll have condensed milk on it. And usually it comes with a little ice cream and something else, but that place is more of like a gourmet place, but you can get them in the little mom and pops for 20 baht, less than a dollar. So here's another temple complex. This one's like very ornate, beautiful. Let's see. This is Wat Fan On. 
This temple was constructed around 1501, so the start of the 16th century. So, like, that's crazy because it doesn't look that old to me. I mean, I'm sure they keep it up, but it, like I would have, if I had to guess, I would have thought it would be newer than that. I would have guessed a newer age, but it's so old, just crazy. Look at how beautiful and shiny this is. And sometimes everything is so grand that you miss like the little small statues that are really ornate as well. I try not to. Of course, over here we have amazingly beautiful temple let's look at some of the ornate work here again you just miss like and that's wood too that's all like painted wood again like a small little detail that you might miss that's a small little detail that has so much detail pretty amazing beautiful yeah beautiful Doesn't look like anybody's in here right now. It's good. It's pretty beautiful. <laughs> The main monastery building features the following. The Chinara Buddha replica. I guess there's like a famous one or something. Mongkon Mahamuni Buddha. And then relics of the Buddha and his noble disciples. That's pretty cool. Again, like that stuff is like beautiful and grand, but I really love like the small detail that you can get into in places like this when you really look closer. Like this is really cool. A female devotee who is a supporter of Wat Pan On. Oh, it's a nice way to honor her. But this is what I mean. Like, maybe you wouldn't look at this normally. Here, let me go look at one over here because the light's better. Maybe you wouldn't because everything else is so grand in here. But then when you really look at these, and they're wood, by the way. These are wood carvings. I know they kind of look metal from the way they're painted, but they're not. It's just, I mean, really cool stuff. Really cool. So this is probably one of my favorite temples here. It's like the oldest looking one. I don't know if it is the oldest. I need to do more research on it, but we'll definitely come back to it. But this whole grounds area is really cool. And you can tell it's kind of, I mean, it's ancient. Like this is all wood. It's not crazy painted like some of the other ones. And then I don't know if you can see that back there. There's like a huge, you know, um, probably what used to be a huge pagoda back there kind of reminds you of like Angkor Wat or something like that um, so we'll go back there and we'll check that out in future videos if you want to see that let me know uh, and we'll definitely do it because this is where I'm staying next month in this little this little uh, condo area here This place is cool. I already know what I'm going to get, though. Thank you so much. <laughs> On my first video where I eat food in Thailand, I should probably eat Thai food, but I'm not because I saw something I really want on there.
What can I say? I like my uh, Fufu coffee. That's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> cup from cup. All right, so this isn't an ideal meal for the first meal I show you here in Chiang Mai. You can definitely get local stuff here, but get that. Uh, pancakes with fresh fruit. In this beautiful place, there's like a canopy of trees over my head. Really like a uh, beautiful like English old world style Asian building where you can go in and eat. And I was actually going to take you to Good Souls, which is next door, in one of my favorite places. And I just happened to walk by this place, and this is how Chiang Mai is. You can just go down a random alley or into a random restaurant and find, like, a gym. But I'm going to taste the food here, tell you how it is. So if you stuck around this far in the video, thank you. Probably not the most healthy choice, but we only live once, and that's why we go and work out, so we can eat this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. See you next video.